Hey guys, we have yet another case review. This time we have one from Be Quiet. This is Dark Base Pro 901. This is a first case in about seven years from Be Quiet for the very high end. And it's a big one. So let's get into it. Like always, we'll do our case reviews in two sections. The first section is gonna be just going through the case, going through its specs, what it comes with and compatibilities. And then in the second part, we're gonna do some benchmarking, put it together and present what our findings were in terms of how it is to build inside, the quality, as well as the actual benchmarks, such as you know temperatures, performance, etc. As you can see, it is a very big case and it's actually really, really heavy. It comes with a big side panel, uh, tempered glass, like usual, and it actually has a lot of accessories as well. Just as a comparison, this is an accessory box that it comes with. Some cases fit in a box like this. I'm gonna take off the side panel and remove the reflections. Definitely a thick side panel. Oh, there's, there's a box inside. Let's get that out as well. So there's more accessories. Bunch of parts. Right. First of all, I'm not a fan of non-reusable bags. I'd prefer all of these screws being in a single bag or like a little box like this. Why can't all of these be just in a slightly bigger box than this? This is a GPU bracket well, to hold the GPU in place and also you can route the cables through. So this is actually really cool. It's one of the nice features about this case. Let's get on working through the case. So be quite I definitely went quite crazy with the bits of tape to hold everything in place. And that's because most of these things actually come off. Let's talk about a few features of this case. It is huge, as you can tell, and it can actually fit all the way up to an E80X motherboard, and then some. As you can see here, you have the actual index for the motherboards, and the, the, each screw hole has the relevant sign. So you can actually take some of these uh, standoffs off and move them around, and there should be some extra standoffs in the bag. The case itself comes with three pre-installed fans. They're 340 mil fans uh, and they're silent wings four fans. We've actually done a Be Quiet fan roundup. Uh, we'll leave the link down in the description below. Uh, but we've actually found silent wings fans being both very quiet and very efficient. So that's a nice touch. Uh, these ones can go up to 1900 RPM. So they're not the slow ones. They're actually of the faster kind, which would be really nice. PWM, of course. The other cool feature is actually this motherboard tray. Um, we'll show this in a bit, but it can actually be removed and flip it other way around. And the reason you might want to use that is, let's say you have this desk as your setup and you want to leave your case on your right hand side. That's no problem. If you leave it on your right hand side, the front of the case will be pointing towards you, all good. But what if you have space constraints and you have to put your case on the left? Having to put it on the opposite side where you're gonna see just the back panel is kind of boring. But what we can do with this case is take this out, invert it and put it the way around. Yes, the cooler is gonna be down the bottom and the graphics card is gonna be at the top, but you can actually show off your build through the other side. To be honest, this is a really expensive case. It retails for 320 euros, I believe. So. That's enough in most cases to buy a motherboard and a CPU, and then you'll still have some money for a very cheap case. So that's a lot of money. This is definitely for high end, and they've packed it with a bunch of features. Uh, let's carry on. Um, what we'll do is just take off more of the bits around. I'll take off the front panel first. In true Be Quiet fashion, by default, this case actually comes in with blanking plates for reducing the amount of noise that it outputs from the inside. So here, the air goes through the sides and into the main case, and you have your nice filter at the front, and there's another filter down the bottom. But this is a blanking place, so actually you can't pour any air through here. So you will have limited amount of air coming through here, but it's gonna be a bit more quiet. But this front panel actually comes off. You can, there you go, you can see the little clips on the sides here, all around. And the front panel just opens up. So th that's one, and that's where that big box with accessories comes in. We have a few extra panels. And one of those panels is a front grill. So you can take this front grill, 
And now you have a front grill on your case. There you go, and you can clearly see the fans through now. Um, you still have the filter on the inside, but there's gonna be more airflow right now. Another thing you could do is, it gives you opportunity to mod this case to whatever you like it might be. You can actually take this off, uh, have it spray painted or um, just replace with something else. So just gives you an opportunity to make it a bit more personal. So I'm not actually sure what kind of material they use for the inside here. Kind of feels like a sports mat, but is designed to keep the sound on the inside. So if you make loads of noise on the inside, but you know, all the walls are closed, uh, it's fine, it doesn't escape. It doesn't make your room noisy. So that's kind of the principle they're going with. And the same goes for the top. So the top section uh, also has insets. So you can remove, kind of click the top panel out of the way. There you go. So the top panel comes off. That's, you know, just a bit of a mesh. And then they have these plastic panel and you can remove these and then just use put the grill back on and put your cooler in here so it can be uh, pushing out air or just fans and that way uh, you do lose some of the noise protection but you get your airflow back in uh, this does have orientation so the little prongs need to go to the back and then just clicks in the other thing that's kind of cool and kind of niche is behind this little panel right here. So you can open up and you actually have a five and a quarter inch bay. You can put your DVD or Blu-ray player in there or um, Be Quiet actually has a little clip showing different kind of mounts, whether it's gonna be some SD card readers or whatever else you'd like. Uh, it's kind of cool to have just an insert or you can have a three and a half and two and a half inch uh, base, which is kind of hot spot. Opportunities are endless here because uh, you've got the space, you can do whatever you want. Let me just kind of cover the front I.O. So at the top, we have our microphone and audio ports. We have four USB 3.2, which are the five gigabit port, as well as a Type-C, which is a 10 gigabit port. Uh, the bottom panel is actually capacity buttons. So you actually change the settings back and forth. So here we have the fan control for the included fan hubs. And here we have the RGB. So we have the different modes and you can put sync on as well. On top, we actually have wireless charger. This is a 15 watt wireless charger. I haven't seen many cases with wireless chargers before, but based on the fact that it's quite high, it might be a convenient place to keep your phone. Next, let's work our way to the back. The panels are solid and yet again, we have the same material here. But what you can see is we actually have mesh over here. So this mesh is mostly for a conversion. If you wanted to convert this side panel or sand side area, to install fans or radiator. For that, you actually have a separate bracket. So what you can do is actually remove this inside panel, uh, which is currently more of a hiding uh, your um, SSD or hard drive mounts. You can remove this out, mount your fans or radiator on here, just like in quite a few Lee and Lee cases, and install it back in here. What's interesting is it, this case clearly provides a lot of flexibility and you can get quite creative um, whether you want to install a distribution plate there or something else, so you can actually remove it and adapt it. These little inserts here uh, are actually to uh, allow you to install drives. So you can actually install caddies in these slots here. Let me just quickly get to the notes. This case has a maximal drive bay capacity and I'll go by sizes. So a single five and a quarter inch bay, you can have up to seven, three and a half inch bays. Two of them are currently set up, so that's part of the delivery and you'll need to get accessories to get more. You can have up to 16, two and a half inch SSDs. That's kind of extreme. Um, out of the box, you can get up to six. There are loads of accessories you can get. Should you want to convert this to, into a ridiculous SSD server or whatever else? but if you're spending 320 euros on the case, uh, you might wanna do that. Um, while we're going through different specs, I already mentioned it comes with three fans, uh, but it can support up to 11 fans. You can have up to three fans at the top. They could be either 120 or 140 mil in size. You can have up to three at the front. So same, 120, 140. On the side over here, you can mount up to three 120 mil fans. 
Uh, at the rear, you we already have a single 140. We can also do 120 if you wanted to change that or move it somewhere else. And you can also install a single fan, 120 or 140 down at the bottom. And as far as fans are controlled, there is actually a fan hub and it's located up here. This top section comes off. So if you really wanted to install, let's say a radiator here, not just fans, but radiators in particular, uh, when you start messing around with all the cables and everything else, it kind of gets messy. The whole thing comes off with the fan hub. So that actually connects just via pins to the main chassis and that controls then goes to the two motherboards. So what you can do is you can mount the radiator and free fans from the radiator into this, connect the wire all up and just slot it in. So you don't need to mess around with all the cabling. It's just there. We have the same here. So um, we have one of those contact pads for the RGB strip that's on the front. So just here, there's an RGB strip and just little pins. So you're not gonna rip off any cables. It just connects and they're spring loaded. So it just connect nicely to the front connector. Let me quickly show you the filters. So we have a front filter. Yeah. So you can clean that. And there's another one down the bottom. There you go. So we have two fans already pre-installed. Again, we have three connectors. You can cable and manage and kind of hide all your cables here. And it's just a single unit. So you can actually just take it off, deal with it, and then slot it back in. And while we're here, you can actually see the hard drive cages from the bottom. Captive thumb lock. And it's actually a pretty solid cage, kind of heavy. Uh, the cage itself does not require any tools. So it's toolless, so you can just literally slide the hard drive in and it clicks in. Following through from the front design, you also have the ARGB strip going around this line over here. And since this panel goes on either side, you can actually open it up and flip it over. So just be careful when you take this out, you unplug the little RGB connector and then you can move this to the opposite side. We'll show that in a second. Also, that's convenient because now you can access all the cabling in here. Uh, the other thing is this panel comes off as well. And if you were to mount a fan down below there, you have a little cover that you can install instead of this to direct the fan air through towards the GPU. We will see this has a slight angle to direct the flow. So there's definitely airflow guides in this to push the air towards the GPU. This cable for the RGB, so you can literally just push it on the other side. So I want to take out the offboard tray. So you can take off the back panel just with two screws. Once you've unscrewed a handful of screws, you can literally just Use the rails and take it out. You have to kind of wiggle it out, but there you go. You got your motherboard tray with the back panel at the same time. And if you really wanted to, you can remove this and install a vertical mount for the graphics card as well. So that's completely up to you. And that could be done in either orientation, this way or the opposite way, which is this way. That's how it works. What's nice about this, you can actually take this out and use this as your build bench. As you can see, it actually stays up horizontally. Basically, it's a, essentially a test bench right now uh, with ability to kind of route the cables behind if you really wanted to. As far as the vertical mount is concerned, um, by default, this case does not come with a vertical mount. So you'd actually have to buy that as an optional accessory. So just bear that in mind. Uh, to be honest, at this price, I would have expected it to have it, but I think this alone is quite a lot of research and tooling to make it work. To mount this back in, you just go from this side and install it the same way, kind of, as you took it out. Uh, the one thing you'll find is you'll have these metal bits here, which are in the way. So you're gonna have to remove this bracket and then reattach it on the other side. I also wanna cover a small thing about the radiator spot. So, since you have loads of fans you can install, you can also install a bunch of radiators. So the radiator support for the top is 120, 140, or 360. For the front, we have 120, 140, 
240, 280, 360, or 420. So you can ha actually have a triple 140 mil fan radiator, which is huge. Um, on the side, we can do 120, 240, 360, and at the rear, you can do 120 and 140. Uh, to be honest, with a layout like this, with a case of this size, uh, I would probably expect somebody to have a full water cooling loop. So I'd probably go with a 420 at the front and probably a 360 at the top and you'll be fine. And then what you could probably do if you really want to get extra air pressure is put in extra fans on the side here, um, unless you want to go and install a bunch of drives, but that's up to you. With the main assembly completed, let me now go set up our test bench and test out and see what it's like. Uh, what it's like to build in and what it's like to actually use. Our test bench is actually an ITX, so it's going to look very tiny in here, but we want to make sure that we use consistent test bench between different systems, so well, we'll see that. Uh, let me get into building and uh, I'll come back to some results. After spending some time tinkering with the case, I can confidently say that this is among the most user-friendly cases that I've worked with. The feature that truly stands out is the removable motherboard tray. You can assemble your whole system on the tray, which is incredibly convenient, and it comes with the added advantage of being able to test your gear before diving into all the wiring. I strongly advise that you first set up the system outside of the case to confirm that all the components are functional, then proceed to assemble it within the case. Once everything is tested and confirmed, all you need to do is smoothly slide it back into the case and voila, you're set. Once everything is put together, you'll notice a generous amount of space, coupled with clever cable routing options. The beauty of it all is you don't really need to sweat over cable management. Just tuck them into designated channels and put them out of mind. There's also a significant gap at the back for the cables before reaching the back panel, so I doubt you'd ever need to push onto it to close. Yes, the space may seem overwhelmingly large when using our standard testing equipment on the ITX board, but even when accommodating a full-size ATX motherboard, this case provides an ample amount of room. We did find an issue with using the ITX board in this case. Due to the layout of the top slot, plugging in either HDMI or DisplayPort cables into the GPU becomes a challenge. I'm sure that 99% of the people buying this case won't be using ITX motherboards, however it's an observation that's definitely worth keeping in mind. By the way, I want to half pack track my comment about the screw bags and screw organizer. Having completed the build, I found that the remaining screws fit quite snugly into the box, making it a handy storage solution. However, my preference still leans towards having all screws housed in a neatly organized box, eliminating the need for single use plastic. One of my favorite features is the ability to flip the case over and have the tempered glass with the full view of your build on the other side. This is possible and cool, but be warned, it's quite an involved process. Be Quiet has an excellent video tutorial on how to achieve this, which I strongly recommend checking out. Another feature that deserves a mention is the neat GPU brackets, equipped with the magnets for easy adjustments when in a standard operation. Moreover, it can be screwed up if you choose to invert the case, providing support from the above. The concept is great, but be mindful of the cable lengths. During my test with a smaller GPU where the PSU cable had to reach higher, I found that it couldn't use the included plastic cover when routing the cable within the support. As a result, I had to rely solely on the GPU brackets and let the cables run straight up. Don't get me wrong, it is still a very clean setup when looking head on, but from an angle the cables become visible, so the visual impact can vary depending on your perspective. One area that could benefit from the bit of enhancement is the fan controller. While both front and top panels house three fan headers, great for fan placement. There's nothing available for the fan at the rear. I would have preferred this to be wired up in a way that left me with just a single cable to manage fan speeds. It's a minor critique, but for the case of this stature, I believe my expectations are well placed. To be frank, I would have also liked to see at least one additional fan included at the front. Which leads us well to the benchmarking. We did a bunch of tests, but we'll concentrate on the most significant ones, starting with the fans operating at the maximum capacity. For the record, the ambient temperature during our test was consistent 21 degrees Celsius. Bear in mind, this is a relatively new test suite for us, so comparisons are somewhat limited. However, as you can see, the temperatures closely mimic those of an open bench, although with the higher noise levels. Nevertheless, it managed to outperform the fractal north. When we look at the more reasonable noise normalized test, which presents a more realistic scenario, we again observe a slight edge over fractal north, in terms of both CPU and GPU temperatures. 
although as expected it trails behind the open bench setup. Given the array of accessories that accompany this case, we've conducted additional tests to evaluate its performance in the various configurations. Beyond the standard setup, we've examined the enclosed quiet configuration as well as the airflow optimized configuration. Interestingly, we found that in the quiet configuration, the case turned out to be the loudest, which is a bit ironic. The difference is minor, just one decibel. I suspect this is because our standard noise measurement is taken from the side of the case. In this setup, there's a slot pointing towards the sound meter, and with the solid front panel in place, it seems to concentrate the noise coming from that side. In terms of performance, we've noticed that airflow mode and stock mode display similar outcomes, whereas the quiet mode registers slightly higher temperatures across the board. This is understandable given the front panel in the quiet mode restricts airflow, allowing only slight gaps at the front sides. Overall, it is certainly a premium case. It's evident that engineers at Be Quiet invested significant thought into creating a case that blends efficiency and practicality. I'm thoroughly impressed with the mechanical design and the ability to disassemble and reassemble it easily. The fact that I could put it all back together without constantly referring to the manual and that all the components fit seamlessly without any warping is nothing short of a blessing. Given its price point, the case clearly is targeted at the system that will be costing over two or three thousand dollars. But I would have liked to have an extra few fans and probably included a vertical mount for that money. But with all things considered, it's a robust case with an impressive performance. What do you guys think? Would you buy this case or look for something alternative? Let us know in the comments below. We hope you found this review helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe for more content like this. We'll see you guys in the next one.